Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Thirty dollars, forty dollars, eight dollars for free. Thirty-five dollars, four dollars, fifteen dollars, seven dollars, hundred fifty dollars. Welcome to another video about paradise and welcome to how much is Panama. In this one we are going to break down our 24 days in Panama and what we spend on food, accommodation, transportation, activities and other stuff and then we are going to sum all of that up but also we are going to break it down again to the cost per day per person so you can get quite a good feeling for how much to spend on a vacation and to have a better planning place. We stayed 24 days and we only took Airbnbs. Let's head into the first topic, which is transportation. For this one, I'm going to exclude the flights because we walked into the country from Costa Rica, so there was no flights there. And then we flew out to Cuba. That is going to be the video after the next one. So stay tuned and make sure to hit subscribe for that one. Also, another reason why I am excluding the flights is it totally depends on where you're coming from. If you're flying in from the US, from Europe, from Asia or whatever, it is going to change the prices for flights drastically. So you got to see those for yourself and it also depends on season. The costs that were included were first of all rental scooter, which we only rented out once for a couple of days on Bocas de Toro. This time we didn't book a rental car at all and that made it $45 for this rental scooter for two days and we only had to fill up on gas for $5. Because we didn't rent a car this time, we relied heavily on buses and colectivos. Both are really cheap in Panama and we only spent $32.50 on those. It gets kind of hectic and chaotic um, in planning going somewhere, but you will make it eventually and it is a great adventure. So I would highly recommend that. But on some routes, it's not quite easy to do that. So that's why we booked shuttles for a total amount of $250. And that's always like a shuttle van where it's like six people in there plus minus a bit and um, then they will drive you also to remote parts like Santa Catalina. It's not that easy to get there by bus from Boquet. You have to switch buses like four times or something but the shuttles are not cheap at all so that's why it's $250. Also for the shorter ways uh, we went we took uh, some Ubers and taxis. Ubers only available in Panama City, but uh, taxis are quite common everywhere. We spent $137.17 on those. The last point in the transportation topic is boats, which is like from Almirante to Bocas del Toro, you will pick a boat, or when we went uh, in Santa Catalina to a small island, um, that was another boat that we paid for and that summed up to $77. That sums up to a total amount of $469.67 for the transportation, which is quite all right, I guess, for 24 days. And we have been traveling almost through the whole country, so I'm pretty fine with that. As I said, you can easily go lower if you don't take the shuttles, but try to get the buses from place to place everywhere. Topic number two are the accommodations. And as I said, this time we stayed in Airbnbs only. And in Panama City, we rented uh, for a couple of days, which makes it a little cheaper. But still, in the end, we paid $1,803.99 on accommodation, which makes it an average of Next thing is food. And for that goes the same thing as for accommodations. As we stayed in some Airbnbs longer, we were able to get groceries for ourselves and cook for ourselves a lot, but still we paid $585 in restaurants, especially like on Bocas del Toro. We went out for breakfast, lunch, 
dinner all the time and also had some cocktails over there because there are quite some nice and cool bars alongside the bay and we chilled out there for a couple of nights. In the supermarkets we spent $370.69 as I said mainly cooking for ourselves but also other stuff we got in supermarkets and especially like you have to drink a lot and in uh, most countries you don't want to drink tap water so you make sure to uh, fill up on water as often as you can and we did that in supermarkets as often as possible. The third point in the food category is the bakery and I only put it in because we spent a lot of money at the bakery in Costa Rica in Panama it was only three dollars because we only went there once for a little snack. The other times we got um, bread and stuff like that in the supermarket. And that makes the food point to a total of $958.69. Number five are the activities and we didn't go short on that one in Panama. We did a lot and we did some very hefty ones. If you want to know what we got for all that money make sure to check out the playlist I'm going to link at the end of this video and there you will see like different activities, tours especially and dives and why we managed and why we were willing to spend that much money on it because for entrance fees it was $88.44 alone and those entrance fees were only for getting into butterfly gardens or getting into uh, Puerto Viejo and stuff like that. So that's pretty pretty pricey already but then there's tours and for those we spent $728.93. There was the last video one that was sunblast that was really really expensive and also the Embera village was expensive as well so that sums up pretty quickly and then on top I'm a diver and that's quite an expensive hobby and I spent a total of $472 on that but if you check out the Koiba video it was totally worth it. I would do it again even though it was that pricey and that makes a total of $1,289.37 for activities alone but I mean you probably will be there only once in your lifetime and then you better do it right and that's what we did. We didn't go short and we're not planning on doing that in other countries either for ourselves but also for showing you and for you to experience it with us as well and so that you can get a better feeling of what you want to do in the country and how much you want to spend on it and if you don't want to miss out on all those adventures make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already i highly appreciate that and also maybe leave a like so i know that videos like this are helpful to you and i make more of those that brings us to the last category which is the rest and in that falls the sim cards and internet use which was $37 in total. We also got souvenirs for $19. We did laundry only once for $7.50 because in most accommodations we had our own laundry machine so we washed by ourselves and saved a lot of money on that. We also went shopping and spent $32 on clothes. We again had to book some fake flights because when entering the country you have to provide an outbound ticket as we didn't know how long we would stay. You can uh, purchase a ticket which then will be cancelled automatically and I'm going to put the link down here so that you can try that if you need it because that's way easier than booking a flight ticket by yourself and then cancel it. This service $28 for two people. I think that's quite all right. Also I went to the hairdresser if you missed out that video. It is the bouquet video. That was kind of fun because I don't speak Spanish very good so uh, yeah I had to somehow communicate what I wanted and that was $13 for that. Last point in that category is the taxes for San Blas. I could have put that in the tours as well but I wanted to have that separately and therefore you have to pay $50 so $25 
per person to get onto the islands. And that makes it a total of $186.50 for the rest category. As that were all the categories, now we are going to sum up. It was a total of $4,708.22 for the both of us for 24 days, which makes it $2,354.11 per person spent for the time there. As I said, check out the playlist at the end if you want to know if it was worth it or not, or if you would spend such an amount. And now to make it comparable to other countries, the amount that we spent per person per day in Panama was $98.09. And that's so much for this video. In the next one, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Panama and if you want to go there, which tips, tricks and what to avoid and maybe what to do, which places I would highly recommend, which ones are maybe a little overrated and what I thought this money was well spent on and what it was not. Cuba is going to be next. It is going to be a little difficult because getting into the country is not as easy as it sounds. Does it actually sound easy? I don't know. It wasn't.